Hello. I'm Nigel Morris Cottrell, and in this issue of basics, I'm going to talk about a type of fraud called a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is a very precise form of fraud. It's named after Charles Ponzi, but that wasn't his real name. His real name was Carlo Pietro Giovanni. It's complicated, but it ends in Ponzi. And he was born in Italy in 1882, but his greatest frauds were in the USA and Canada in the 1920s. He used a number of aliases, but Charles Ponzi is the one that's endured. It's also why you always see the term Ponzi scheme with a capital P when it's written down. There are aspects in common with a pyramid scheme, but they are different. A Ponzi scheme is an incredibly simple concept. A fraudster tells his victims that he can invest their money and earn a return, but in fact he makes little or no return. Yet he tells victims that their investments are performing well, and he persuades them to leave their capital with him, perhaps even to invest more, and to receive income. And he does in fact pay his victims, at least to start with. But if he just repaid the capital, pretending it was income, sooner or later he would run out of money. So far, he's just an ordinary fraud. What turns it into a Ponzi scheme is that the fraudster continues to recruit victims and uses some of their capital to fund the pretend income to earlier investments. Often the fraudster produces false statements to show his victims how well their supposed investments are going. A hundred years on, the Ponzi scheme is gaining a new lease on life with widespread frauds being committed through social media and messaging apps. Almost everyone who has a Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Telegram, or any one of a number of alternatives will have had or will receive a message containing an invitation to invest in gold, currency, crypto, shares, anything. Frauds just cold call on mobile phones, landlines, and send emails, and even letters that arrive looking very official through your door. Also, the Ponzi fraudster often relies on victims to introduce this supposedly great investment to their families, friends, and colleagues. That's one reason why the early victims are paid because then they tell their friends, families, and colleagues, look, I got this money. It sounds hackneyed, and it was already old when I put it in my first book in 1996, but the golden rule really is, if it seems too good to be true, it almost certainly is. But how big do things get? Well, as I'm writing this, a notification has popped up on my screen to say that the UK's national crime agency and other enforcement agencies across Europe have worked together to break up a Ponzi scheme operating across 10 countries, and it's currently thought to have cost victims 645 million euros. And those are ordinary victims. These are not, these are not big companies. They're not really wealthy people. They're people like you and me. And of course, there was Bernard Madoff, who made off with an estimated 20,000 million US dollars. And there have been many, many more. There was a significant number of failures of so-called hedge funds in the USA as the global financial crisis began to unfold, while governments were denying there was a problem. Some were indeed the result of falling markets and investors who wanted their money back before others had a chance to cash out. But many were exposed as Ponzi schemes because the operators had spent victims' money on their own high living, had produced fake statements, and were demonstrably not paying returns out of either trading in assets or revenue from those assets. Instead, they were paying on the deposits of later victims. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, follow, and share. But most of all, watch FinCrime TV.